Uh, what was my name again? I'm here to introduce myself. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, this is uh, your final lecture in our Making a Meaning uh, faculty, Sire faculty lecture series. Uh, I think we had a kind of a wonderful opportunity to see Eric, Andrew, and uh, Hernan last week talking a little bit about ideas on the one hand problems on the other, and finally, sort of personalities and, and works of architecture. The last week, the last, this lecture is a little bit unorthodox in terms of, it's, it won't be dealing with buildings uh, in, in any kind of way, but it will be dealing with the problem of the body, the space, and the environment. So we're gonna be tracing that, that uh, problem uh, all the way from, uh, what it would be the late Middle Ages up to uh, Mannerism or Baroque. So we're gonna be covering about 400 years of painting uh, in about 40 minutes. So that's sort of like about the, the, the rate at which we work at making a meaning. So I thought it was sort of appropriate in, in a certain regard. So thanks for uh, being here. And also this is uh, probably the lecture that is the most related to the work that you guys are gonna be developing in the next uh, week or so, uh, the, the, um, which is your uh, final uh, construct. Uh, one, one thing, one piece of, a couple of, of pieces of information, is just like the work, the final construct is gonna be a team of three people. Yeah. So it will make it easier to construct, but also more complex to resolve as a problem. So the lecture is actually gonna be centered around the idea of uh, the composition uh, to compose three bodies in space. Uh, and this is like a, it's by no means a new problem. Uh, it starts a long time ago, but I started to, I decided to start somewhere with Giotto, which is uh, uh, just kind of the transition between late Middle Ages and, and, and the Renaissance. And it's a discussion that I didn't kind of quite invent it either, but uh, it's a, a discussion that I was exposed to about like 15 years ago when I was uh, in my school on the East Coast uh, with under the work of uh, my mentor, uh, Raymond Abraham, and his partner at the time, uh, John Waltermuth. Uh, so it was like, you know, I was like studying architecture and all of a sudden from one day to the other we were looking at Renaissance painting. I had no idea what hit me. But I figured there were a lot of kind of mysteries and, and readings to be resolved over time. And you know, every now and then, you know, when I have a chance, we kind of introduce some of this work. So bear with me, we're gonna do like 400 years, three bodies in space, just like a, a little bit of kind of how to look at these paintings. I'm gonna try to kind of mouse over it, but for the most part, I would like you guys to kind of like concentrate on finding these trios uh, and kind of how the trios are organized. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the title of, of, of the lecture is uh, Imposture, uh, as an imposter or somebody that takes the place of other, or in uh, what I would call a kind of the shifting relationship between space, environment, and the body. So as we progress this discussion, we're gonna see that sometimes the body takes the place of the space, the space seems to meld with the environment and so on, so we're gonna be looking at the transmutation of the problem and a shifting of the hierarchy between body, space, and environment. 1267, 1337, it looks like about yesterday. Uh, and let me introduce now uh, our first uh, set of three elements. So we have uh, three figures, an environment, uh, so a space surrounding them. In this case, it looks like a piece of architecture of, of not quite a building. Actually, I think that the, for the most part, that piece, that uh, definition of that composition kind of like struggles or, or, or presents the problem of a building as not being such. In this case, in the case of painting, the building might actually be trying to compartmentalize information. So you can see that we have like kind of one of the characters is presented outside and kneeling um, or, or seated. The other one is, you can see there's a little bit of a, a progression and a transformation. We have like a sitting figure outside, a kneeling figure in the middle, and a partial figure uh, at the top. So I think that's, those are kind of like some of the, of the questions that we're gonna start to ask, which is like all of a sudden the figures are now presented as a complete element, but also as a series of parts. So, uh, and then what we call the environment in this case is 
that blue background uh, that, that you can find in the, in, in, in the back, which is like, it might represent the sky or, or, or something else. So you can see like kind of like clearly depicted the three elements that we're gonna be kind of like chasing uh, after. Uh, one of the things, uh, the two, two, two things to mention with Giotto, we kind of, some of you, are, are you familiar with the work of Giotto by any chance? Some of you, a couple of you? Oh, otherwise, just look it up, it's just a uh, fascinating work uh, overall. Um, but two interesting things, we're kind of like living the Middle Ages, and, and, and I think that this is a fascinating discussion, which is like all of a sudden, it seems to kind of be this preconception that Middle Age art or, or Middle Ages art is uh, a little bit more primitive than the Renaissance. You know, the Renaissance has a better depiction of the figure and, and so on. The work of uh, the late Middle Ages is a little bit flatter on that. I would actually argue for, for a moment that that flatness is like an investigation of a certain abstract nature or an abstract plane or an abstract presentation of a problem. If you guys are aware, by like the fifth century before Christ, we got an amazing rendition of Greek sculpture and we can actually have like a three-dimensional construct which is like the bodies are represented kind of in full proportions and in a spatial manner. So this idea of like this retraction to the two dimensions, it's not necessarily kind of like a problem of primitivism, but rather kind of like a new way of kind of presenting information. Well, we look at, and, and, and of course, Giotto is, a, is the one that kind of starts to create a rupture or a break between the, the, the old Middle Age uh, art and, and the new, um, or, or what's coming later, which is like a little bit of the Renaissance. And, and one of the things, you guys are familiar that like this representation of saints, and this is uh, one of the first versions, well, not one of the first ones, Giotto's version of uh, the Last Supper. Uh, so you have like Christ over there, um, and so on, and you can see that kind of like everybody that is supposed to be a saint or a figure, they, they have like they're represented with this halo, uh, which is a very common representation in, 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 the, in the middle in Middle Ages. But now the interesting thing is just like that, and I think this is like kind of a painting that starts to produce a, or trigger another set of ideas, which is like you see that we have like six figures in the in the back that they're facing front with the black halos, and then you actually have like six figures that we're looking at them from the back and the halo is in front of them. So rather than the halo being in the back, it's actually the halo is kind of now working as a mask. And I think that this is something that is gonna to start to trigger a series of um, riddles or, or compositional problems that they start to uh, trigger a, a kind of an idea of composition and certain intelligence behind it. Uh, we're going back now, let's, this is a kind of like a series of elements. You can see that kind of now the, the, the architecture or the space is kind of way much more intensified. We have a kind of a tripartite composition, kind of three vertical panels, uh, a series of people organized kind of seemingly inside of the building. Uh, now we actually find a series of, uh, I think I got, you know, you can see like the, st the, the, the static figure on the one side and now kind of a more of an animated figure or sequence which you can see on the left hand side you're gonna find at three people, a group of three people kind of in seemingly different positions, a group of three people listening, a group of three people here talking in the back, a group of three people seeing to, seeming to in, in, uh, intrude in the space or, 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 or. so it's just like what we're, going, what we're finding is sort of like not only three bodies in space but our kind of composition of trios in space that they relate to one another. So you see they're kind of like, they're like little groupings and at the same time they can be read like individually as a transformation from uh, sitting into standing or from static into movement uh, or they can be uh, read as an isolated group. Now the discussion of if we look at the, the, the space here kind of being kind of quite muted and, and you see that now the hierarchy kind of shifted from the space into the bodies. Now you can see that almost we kind of got rid of, 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 of the space itself and when we find it's sort of like a battle scene where like all of we have is body and or series of bodies uh, and, and now kind of like these elements, the torches and so on are the ones that are currently kind of in, in charge of covering the, the, the space definition and kind of what produces kind of like a distance with the, with the background. The depiction of the, of the one and the many 
And now just like this idea of pairing building or seemingly building and groups of people. So you can actually kind of like start understanding a little, a little bit of like this, a kind of like a Rome, Romeo and Juliet uh, scenario where like kind of like a certain amount of people affiliated with a certain building on the right hand side. Uh, 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 and, and you see kind of like the, 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 it's not a building itself, a kind of a rational form that responds to rational process, uh, processes or, or gravities. But all it has its own kind of series of impossibilities built in. Then on the left hand side, we have like the other group kind of affiliated with another uh, kind of seemingly building construction. And then if you find, I don't know if you can see at the very top, uh, this idea of the part that starts to sort of prefigure that you see like those two fingers kind of like coming from the sky. So all of a sudden, we have like this kind of division between the body as a whole and the body as a part. Um, now we have again kind of like the body in space, but you can see that now the space actually starts to dematerialize around uh, the body itself. So we have the body being a central figure, and the three parts are kind of like three different states of a given building. So it's just like you see kind of as a pictorial technique, we're actually kind of revealing, on the left hand side, we're revealing emptiness. In the, in the middle, we're revealing the, the, the kneeling figure, and in the third one, kind of like the crucifix and so on. As you have mentioned, that this is a, a PG-13 uh, lecture, parental guidance. I mean, we're going to see religious interpretation in, in the form of painting, nudity, uh, violence, and so on, which is kind of like a little bit of what, what comes uh, the topics of, of preference. Now, again, it's just like this, this idea of subverting gravity and, and going back to this idea of abstraction and kind of like submitting the body to kind of like a different kind of regime, which is not the regime of, of gravity and nature anymore, but rather kind of the regime of ideas and might or might, whatever those ideas are, we, can, we won't discuss them in, in, in this place. But just so you can see that all of a sudden, the, the, the race of the idea, the fact that this body can separate itself from the ground and kind of like almost kind of have as much value as kind of the, the, the building element on, on the left hand side. So we have a, a solid element and an ethereal element kind of like playing uh, together in, the, in, in, the, in this one composition. Now it's just like what we have is like the building shrunk to encompass uh, our three, uh, well, three and a half, three and a head figures. Uh, so three main figures, and you can see that now kind of like the building, rather than kind of like being in the back and kind of in a hole, is now a part, and it's actually smaller than the bodies themselves. So again, it's sort of like a relationship, the relation between the scalar relationship between object, space, environment, and figure, they kind of are continuously shifting. And, and through that shifting, we can kind of achieve different uh, narrative effects. Same case now, kind of the buildings projected back, the figures back in the front. You can see also like the, 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 the idea of accumulation. Uh, in this case, we are kind of like three very distinct moments of accumulation. Kind of the, the, the three figures on the, on the left hand side, the multiple figures at the bottom, and the naked bodies at, at, at the bottom, kind of in a way, kind of inter, intertwined together. Uh, again, this sort of like shifting relationship between background building and uh, uh, and setting. Again, another example of it. I mean, so it's, I think the narrative of each individual painting doesn't matter so much, but it's just like it's it's interesting to look at them as a series and kind of see kind of how these things grow and shrink in in scale. Interiority versus exteriority. You can see now that like, the background becomes even flatter. You can see kind of where Rothko comes from when you look at some of these paintings. Um, you see sort of like the brush stroke and so on. I mean, like this sort of temporal deterioration on the one hand, but on the other side, there's also kind of a, a kind of an interesting atmospheric effect. But you can see kind of like that now, just like it's a fairly sparse environment, and kind of like the the posture of the of the of the of the figures are the ones that are kind of in charge of carrying the narrative. And finally, I think that this is sort of like the, the moment where like the building or, or, or the space becomes the environment. So you actually start kind of like trimming and, and, uh, or, or focusing on these like big, white, solid planes. And the collision between these figures sort of emerging from the building and this incomplete figure seem to kind of hover against it. So I think it's a, it's a pretty, pretty interesting uh, 
uh, that kind of in the setting of these white planes that they, they seem to kind of portray a solid, a solid cube of kinds, not unlike the ones you hang out uh, on in, in your... So we, we kind of, we look at the idea of seemingly flatness. I mean, I'm kind of like the idea of like almost the two-dimensional realm as kind of as a potential uh, for, for ex experimentation and, and, and narratives. Now we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about Piero da Francesca because he brings another series of, 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 of problems, which is kind of like how to create a detachment from this idea of the two dimensions that start kind of rendering three dimensions. So we're gonna see sort of like the role of mathematics, all of the sudden it's gonna, mathematics and geometry are gonna be kind of like much closer related to the idea of, 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 of the pictorial plane. Uh, and one of the things that I want to start, I mean, uh, I think one of the, 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 the interesting things is now kind of like this idea of uh, rendering the depth, uh, which, you know, before we did without and kind of like, and we twisted it as much as we could, but now kind of like the, the problem that starts to emerge and, and is going to be investigated for the following 200 years, this idea of like rendering depth. So let's look at, at the elements for a second, which are figures, seemingly a building or, or something defining by, by means of planes. And then you can see that in the very back you have like a combination of like landscape and uh, also sort of like a cityscape. Yeah, so all of a sudden there's like a, the, the apparition of the, of the city sort of like as one more element in, in the narrative. Um, you can see that the figures are much more uh, the, this is all more like a facial expression type of project. You can see kind of like the faces are kind of actually quite still and, and, and everything else uh, seems to be a little bit more dynamic, but the face and the facial expression seems to be kind of like carrying the way of the, of the composition. This is again kind of how do you articulate and, and, and correct a narrative along the way. The, the interesting thing is just like that uh, Piero La Francesca starts working with the idea of, of perspective introducing this idea of, uh, uh, but, but as a projective method. It's no longer an intuitive an approximation, but rather kind of like something that we can measure and compass, calculate, and, and portray. Uh, so we can see that kind of like the, the, the idea of the architectural elements, and the, 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 uh, just such as a, as, a, as a column, or a beam, or a wall, or, or an ornament, or a capital, uh, they're gonna be kind of like key elements to let us kind of understand kind of like the recession of, of, of space. So in this case, we have like, kind of like an interior portrait and an exterior portrait kind of like defined by this sort of, sorry, it's like a dual composition with a, one, it's like a flat composition on the left hand side, which is like just landscape and figure. And the other one is the one that tries to kind of like break the pictorial plane and start to render this idea of, of depth. Uh, now we can see a similar, uh, I mean, just understand this, this, this paintings as, experiments in a way. They're by no means, uh, and that's kind of what I find intriguing about them. Each painting seems to kind of like carry a, a problem and investigates itself to, the, to, to a certain extent and then there's always the next painting and that's a little bit kind of how we try to work as well. So in this case you can see a little bit of the same problem like the, the, the architecture kind of like now in charge of articulating and compartimenting the, the narrative. This idea of the recession of space or the idea that the building or element or the spatial element can actually create this sort of like quadruple uh, condition or quadrant uh, or like they're gonna, you see they're kind of they're fairly, fairly static. So you see kind of like the figure in itself is not necessarily kind of the most relevant part but rather kind of the elements that they divide and uh, distort the, the space. Uh, I think uh, this is sort of like the seminal, uh, this, well, this one actually is the, 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 the seminal Piero de Francesco kind of breakthrough in terms of like really incorporating, this is one of the first paintings that incorporate uh, perspective as a, as, a, as a method of, of, of composition and rendition of space in, in painting. And you can see that mainly because, what do we see here? We see a little bit of the walls and a little bit of the ceiling. Yeah. Same thing here, like you see we're paying kind of attention to the ceiling elements a little bit of the wall, but there's no ground. Now in this painting, I mean, like one of the most interesting things that they seem to merge, and they allow us to kind of like render depth, is this idea of the ground plane and its subdivision. So you can see that now we have like the tiling method at the bottom, the idea that there's a kind of like a checker pattern and so on, kind of like further reinforces the, 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 the rendition of, of space. And the interesting thing that, it just like if you guys kind of like look a little bit more into these paintings, what you're gonna find is that 
some of these uh, mathematical exper or geometrical experiments are actually also portrayed to the figures themselves. So the figures are constructed geometrically as opposed to by the, the Hambridge. So they all have like, kind of like a really interesting uh, sort of skeletal of uh, a skeleton of geometry are going to fancy relate to the face and, 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 and the body uh, as well. So I encourage you to look at that kind of how that goes from kind of like building but also that's why these things that look so that look like a first gen um, animation uh, of, of kinds or, or computer model of, of some kinds. Um, well, again, like, kind of like the three part tight. Now you see kind of like that we have like bigger bodies at the front, shorter bodies, or for shortening bodies, kind of further in the back, and then kind of like the mysterious figure on the very left. But you can see that now we're kind of like working with the idea of sizes and scale of elements mediated by a, a proportional system, which is that, that of perspective. Um, and this is when it gets interesting because like, uh, this is another kind of separate experiment by Piero de Francesca, but it kind of has to do with the, the bodies, the entanglement, and, and kind of you can see like that the perspectival method on the right hand side becomes almost like a triumph of, you know, you can see sort of like the jumbled geometry on the one side kind of as a method of organization, and then on the right hand side, as a resolution of the painting, you have like this sort of like triumphal arch, pretty well sort of like depicted in perspectival in a perfect type of rendering. So I think that you have like the, also kind of the, the, the interesting kind of part of the composition is sort of like the, the dynamic flags and, and, and uh, war emblems on the, on the one side and then kind of how those things, they stabilize themselves to create that arch formation on the, on the right hand side. So it's sort of like dynamic objects versus like stable uh, movable objects. Um, again, three guys. In many different guises, you can see we have like three on the on the right hand side, three elements uh, now on on, on, on on this composition. You can see kind of like now in this like a baptism scene of kinds. Uh, we have like the third body over here in the back, and then you see another third group of three characters kind of further back and merging with the, with the landscape. So they're kind of like it's the the the, the recession of space is not necessarily linear, but rather sort of. Uh, it's uh, intermittent, so you have like back, front, back, and further back. Um, again, this is sort of, I think it's like a terrifying image uh, uh, in its own kind, and this is just made out of, this is going back to the economy of the three figures in space. Uh, and I think that just, uh, just the position and the body postures of like all three different figures kind of have a kind of enough cloud to kind of like carry the composition by themselves. So if that ex experiment of, of, of perspective was going nicely, uh, was kind of nicely articulated by Piero da Francesca, I think it's Andrea Mantegna uh, that, that kind of like brings it, um, you know, a step uh, closer. Now kind of in the articulation of this idea of the rendition of depth as a wide open field. So you can see that now we just kind of within the same picture plane, we can find the village on the, sorry, the village scene, we can find kind of like the, these vagabond elements kind of like at the very front. Collapse into the picture plane, now we have kind of like the city or the metropolis as you might call it in the back. And it all seems like to like not only kind of like can render uh, depth now, but we can also kind of like collapse things back into our picture plane. So it's just like it's not only sort of like a problem of recession, but Mantegna invents the problem of bringing back, uh, bringing back compositional elements from uh, our vanishing point. I, I forgot to talk about the, the vanishing point in Piero de Francesca. So the interesting thing about this is sort of like the, comp you see like kind of like the figures covering the weight of the composition on the, on the bottom of the page, uh, a certain kind of like dialogue occurring in the same, but you can see kind of like how we go from feet to road and we can kind of like trace all the way back to the city itself. So we have like, kind of like this, this, this idea of the, the foreshortening, uh, the collapse foreshortening back into, uh, uh, into the picture plane. Where am I um, or, or the collapse of the, of, of the vanishing point, and I call it. I mean, this, uh, this is a kind of like an instance that I call the, the folding of space. I mean, like this idea of kind of like that, eliminating the recession, kind of like bringing elements that they seem to belong to the back back to the front and just kind of like seeing kind of what happens when, when, when you do that. So there's a, a kind of like an interesting folding methodology in that regard. 
so this is kind of now playing between the perception of the eye and the perception of the mind in terms of the perception of the eye, the way that the, the perspective is rendered and also kind of like the, the, the way you actually trick it and you kind of establish a certain kind of like vibrancy and intermittency uh, about it. Three figures, I mean like you can see now kind of like the idea of the, of the, of the hand uh, and then right next to the hand and so it's just like, so you have like the detail of the part on the one side and then kind of like a typical kind of like village rendition just kind of like pretty much at the same scale of the hand so just kind of like the scale of the city and the scale of the landscape they're kind of like collapse into one single space which is uh, uh, an interesting method of going this thing and then this idea of how you we've been looking at the idea of the of, of the vanishing point uh, kind of as a main kind of tool to render perspective uh, or, or, or depth but also kind of what we're going to start looking through Mantegna a little bit is like the idea of the invention of the point of view being as relevant as the vanishing point. So in this case, you can see that this is like a fully dramatic way of observing and understanding the recession of, of a body. So you can see like, kind of like, the, like we're positioned as observers in a very peculiar way in relationship to the body that we're observing or, or the painting that we're observing. Again, it's like a three people composition, but you can see that now the observer and the position of the server in relationship to the tableau is actually kind of like, the, it's the fourth element in, uh, uh, and it's part of that composition. So the way we look at things and the position from where we look at things, they, be, they will become kind of like a little bit of, 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 of the next investigation by Mantegna. Uh, this is us wonderful. I mean, this is kind of one of the crucifixion scenes. I don't recall if this is like a part or the whole, but it's just like the idea that the crucifixion is, the, the cruciform is not there as a form, but rather we're looking kind of like at the bottom of it and kind of what happens below. So you can actually obviate the, the cruciform as a, as a guiding principle for a composition. And now kind of like look back at sort of like this idea of the portion of the body at the top and then kind of like the melee or, or conflict um, happening at the bottom. So I think that is a pretty interesting kind of like way of cropping and understanding the scene without kind of obviating the most important part. Uh, you can see at the bottom, there's always the dice players that we're going to find throughout the Renaissance. Um, uh, and then, and this is like, again, this is like a guy that's like, okay, we've been talking about bodies, we've been talking about body parts, and then this guy comes up with this composition, which I find like kind of pretty fascinating, which is like this idea kind of like of the hollow body. So the body now is just, it becomes a shell. I mean, like in the, represented in, the, in, the, in a way of uh, armatures. But the, I think honestly, we brought like a completely different dimension to the problem of uh, the composition of figure to figure. And now it's like figure to figure to part uh, and, and part to part, uh, as, as you can demonstrate at the very top of the composition over here. So this idea of like kind of understanding now the hollow body is gonna kind of like trigger um, <clears throat> a very peculiar kind of way of understanding. There's a kind of a, a, actually like a draft, uh, uh, a hand drawing kind of version of this painting that is even more, more fascinating in that regard because it's sort of like a black and white negative space rendition of, you know, you can see kind of like what we're really looking at here. We're actually using the curvature of the armature uh, as a way to kind of define that negative space between, uh, between the parts. And then that's kind of how we trigger that, that complexity. Um, this is another experiment. I mentioned it because, like, it's just uh, this is a uh, coming at Liz Posse. In uh, it's sort of like this is like paintings. I mean, most of these paintings you're going to find them in church environments. This one kind of happens to be in a palace in, in Mantova, uh, in the north of Italy, uh, and it took sort of like 14, 15 years to paint. Uh, and, and the fascinating thing about this thing is just like that. All of a sudden, we're using this idea of math. Uh, or, or, or perspective or an advantage, and the figures are painted in full scale. So as you enter the room, what you're going to find is that each one of these paintings and the way they relate to the environment, they seem to be kind of like a continuation of um, of the, 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 the dynamic, I mean, like us going kind of like throwing through, through the room. So this idea of like depicting things in full scale and kind of a static entities uh, provides a kind of like a pretty interesting breakthrough in terms of a vantage point. Uh, same thing, this is like, you know, you can see like a little bit of a column that is painted, but it's actually a column. Uh, and then the body sort of in full scale, kind of now with the, the projection and so on. 
Um, Raphael was another example of, of composition. Now we can see kind of like clearly depicted the, the three bodies again. I think just like that. This is kind of the part where like we're really, we're kind of swinging all the way into, from Renaissance into, into mannerism in a little bit. Uh, and, and now we're kind of, I want you guys to kind of specifically look at the composition between the bodies because it's going to get a, a little bit more interesting. Uh, so here you can see kind of like just a, if you understand the postures and the role of the hand, the, the, the shoulders, uh, the, the legs and the breaks in the body kind of as a way of articulating kind of a narrative on the left hand side uh, and a very different one on the right hand side just by kind of understanding of this idea of posture, bending, folding and, and twisting uh, the, the human figure. Uh, those three birds also are kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> A different, uh, we, we still have to figure that one out. Um, and then this is kind of what I call the, 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 the idea of uh, entanglement, um, which is like that as a way of, of, of also kind of understanding uh, depth. It's just like you see kind of like elements not only are in front of elements, but also they seem to be in front and behind. So kind of the way we're actually looking at, you can see that there's a, one of these, I'll try and go back. Uh, you can see kind of like now we have like the arm in the front, the arm in the back, the hand in the front, the hand in the back, and so on. So you actually start having this entanglement of body parts as a way of kind of like tying a spatial knot uh, in, in, in the picture plane. So it just I think that's a, an interesting notion that we've seen attempts uh, uh, before, but I think that this is kind of what Raphael is kind of where it starts to get uh, a little bit more, more clear. Uh, again, it's just sort of like the cruciforms almost kind of like vanish and flattened. You can see that they're actually more T forms than cruciforms. So again, it's like this idea of like fighting against representation also, also present. Uh, again, this idea of entanglement, uh, this idea of, of like kind of movement and, and going from side to side. Uh, clothing is making a comeback here. Uh, this is like, uh, well, I, I won't ex extend on it uh, that much, but you can see that now that the, the bales and the, the voluptuousness, the distortion of the fabric against the body, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, kind of also new territory to explore, which is now is not like, a, well, that's, I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, you can see that the, 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 the coloration and, and, and the folding of the fabric, it becomes uh, sort of like a transition or, or, or an interface between one body and, and the other. Uh, yeah, you can see sort of like the, the top white figure, at the, at the, 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 the white figure at the very top kind of how like the, you actually start kind of the rendering depth within the, the body itself. Uh, this is again, uh, talk about uh, a whole series of heroes. Uh, and probably this is kind of one of the most interesting ones. Uh, this is uh, Tintoretto. Now the, 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 the idea of the body and posture are, are, are going to become crucial as a method of composition, the one and, and the many. Uh, this is uh, San Mark. Uh, the idea of the, the point of view or the vantage point, um, the way we're positioned to look at an object is just like this is a, a huge uh, breaking point in terms of uh, what what Tintoretto is going to start to do is going to shift the point of view as you know we're used to going to look at the painting frontally what he's going to do is going to shift the pictorial plane and we're going to be looking upwards yeah so now he's going to start using kind of uh, we're going to kind of like go through that in in, in a minute uh, but you can see again kind of like the floor the perspective the bodies resist receding in space and, and kind of the narrative uh, also kind of a little bit of the white sequence you can see sort of sequential motion of transformation or, 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 or sequence of uh, a transfor transformative sequence in the form of bodies on the, on the front. So there's a little bit of a temporal dimension as well that starts to emerge out of, out of the composition. So it's sort of like time in, in, in it's, it's time two times as opposed to like one time. Um, and you can see now that also like the detachment of like that which is below uh, and, and belongs to the landscape. And now there's like this alternative landscape, which is like this moment of uh, the, the idea of the entire, the, the environment becomes an active player in the composition. So you can see kind of like the clouds uh, and the cloud elements, they start to kind of emerge and kind of compete against the, 
nakedness or uh, dress uh, uh, fold dressing folds, uh, and, and they all become kind of in a way the, the body in a way struggles to kind of like emerge from that uh, conflicting field between environment and, and, and clothing. And also bringing the scale of all of a sudden the accumulation of bodies they become the environment uh, itself or the landscape itself. Uh, most of these paintings that we're looking uh, at and, and they're showing like frontally, if, if you guys are in, in, in Venezia uh, anytime soon, maybe after you graduate from making a meaning you can make a little tour of uh, chiquetis and, and ombras in, in, in Venice and, and swing by, by the Scuola San Rocco uh, um, to see some of the work of Tintoretto. Uh, and the interesting thing is just like this is like a hall, a fully painted hall, but the way you enter it is actually with a mirror. So you enter the space with a mirror and you're actually looking at all of the paintings at the ceiling. You're actually looking at them through this sort of like lens. So you're not looking anymore to the walls for meaning, but rather kind of as the projection uh, of it. Uh, so this, all of these images are kind of, you can see that now this idea of the vantage point is kind of like crucial. Look, the way we're, we're not only we're looking up, but also we're looking uh, at these figures from a very peculiar point of view that we kind of haven't quite seen before. Uh, we don't see these type of projections uh, kind of in, in our real life, uh, kind of like moving around. We can never, well, it's not that we can never, just like we're not used to uh, kind of like finding these type of postures. And I think and this is kind of like where the realm of painting really starts to expand uh, kind of the, 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 the potential for, for body and posture and, 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 and narrative on, 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 this, on all the sides. So you can see kind of like the, the foreshortened body that became, uh, that the study with Peter La Francesca is now kind of like really taken to a whole, whole new level. Okay, I'm just swing through these things a little bit. Again, three bodies, one folded. I mean, you can now start looking at bodies as being folded or unfolded, you know, as being kind of fully con con contracted or fully expanded. Uh, and I think that's something that is going to start to time and, and establish a certain rhythm in the, in, in the narrative and the composition. Now you can see kind of like figures can also like fly and suspend themselves, they're kind of like detached from the realm of gravity. Uh, and we can look at them pretty much the way, I mean, like, I, I think I'm, we, we've been talking about this uh, uh, before when you guys were developing some of your models, kind of like this idea of the removal of the plane, the gravity plane uh, or the gravity direction as the main way of presenting an object. Uh, you can see that some of that discussion kind of like started like about like five, or 600 years ago. Uh, in the form of like now we're kind of like presenting bodies devoid of gravity and kind of like that allows for a new set of, of postures that, that we couldn't have imagined before. Uh, same thing now just kind of like gravity versus no gravity are kind of integrated in a continuous realm uh, and the, 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 the tripods or the triparts uh, are kind of like uh, uh, organized under a different regime altogether. Another intimate figure, uh, three figures looking in, in different directions. Uh, this is, uh, again, this is like a, on the discussion of organization of space and depth and so on, and actually changing and providing a different vantage point. Now I think that this is, this is a fascinating point, image in terms of like, this is like the Last Supper, but by Tintoretto, which is like, you can actually see that we're, not look, we're no longer in the, at the forefront of the composition or in a privileged point of view, but rather we're looking at the final supper or the last supper pretty much from the kitchen, you know, from the kitchen sink or, or, or the back of the room as opposed to the front of the room. So in a way we're kind of, that idea of kind of like shifting the point of view and the last supper as, a, as, a, as such a, a iconic representation, all of a sudden we're kind of in a position in the back of it and looking at it from, uh, the other way around. You saw a little bit of that in Giotto and the problem of the front and the back before, but. But I think that that's a part of the intelligence of the painting is sort of like knowing how to position yourself as a viewer. Um, 
more of the same in terms of now it's just like this is like static figures versus dynamic figures. Uh, you see that there's no longer space or there's no longer an environment. It's just like really the space is just that, that which happens within, between bodies. And uh, this idea of like figure metamorphosizing in, in, uh, or creating this sort of, like delayed transformation between uh, a figure and that which seems to be uh, an environment as well. Well, this is like, again, this is like almost like a catalog of possible postures. I'm gonna like, and you see like, I know it's just like really going all, all the way with how much you can kind of present the same object from a multiplicity of point of views. Uh, so you see like, a, we have like about like 35 different figures kind of presented under different postures and, and, and with different degrees of expression. Now is this idea of entanglement uh, and gravity. The tripartite and the double tripartite. We've seen, a, I think we've seen kind of some of these boat scenes in Raphael before, and now it's sort of like the re-emerge. And you see kind of, we are like the three part the, the tripod condition on the on the left hand side, and then this sort of like unbalanced figure on the, on the back of it, and the boat kind of like sh serving as this sort of shifting plane or shifting gravity plane. Uh, and then this idea of projection, the idea of the of the mirror behind, the idea of the soldier uh, kind of emerging from a box on the side, the way you decide to present a, a figure as full on the left hand side or as partial as only the head and emerging from this like box element on the side. Um, so yeah, a lot of like show of stuff by, by the time we get here. Again, these are more kind of like, well not classical, but again, if the, the idea of, of, of this dynamic organization of three figures, you can see again now it's sort of like the sequential arrangement uh, kind of that we go from like unfolded unfolded on the on the very edge to carefully folded on the other side of the composition um, again we're like kind of looking almost from the grave now I mean like we're looking all the way down uh, all the way almost almost at the floor level looking up the dragon, the figure, the armor. Uh, again, three figures, kind of the most important. Vertical, slanted, and seated on a dragon form. Uh, yeah, the hand, I mean, like you can see kind of like the, that the hand becomes sort of like a ex very careful expression, expressive element sort of the five fingers over here, and then on the other side of the composition at the very bottom, the feet also become sort of like meaningful in kind of how to articulate the graciousness of that. Uh, same thing, in terms of entanglement, whatever these images are about, I think in terms of entanglement and combination of, of, of two figures together, this is Cain and Abel, uh, I think, yeah, some of those two brothers. Uh, entangled together and almost losing balance, uh, which I think is like a pretty interesting kind of like moment, kind of when you actually understand that now the figures, they might be about to tip over, or about to lose their ground, uh, and that's kind of like capturing, it's almost like a photo, what we will get to know as a photographic moment later on. I mean, like we, this is almost kind of how to render that idea of like losing ground kind of within a, a, a two-dimensional composition. Again, these are kind of like gracious on the, on the, on the three-part sort of like arrangement. You know, one figure kind of hovering on top of the other. And you know, I think this is the structural question that comes to do with like in the way it might relate back to your assignment. It's just like kind of in which way you're able to kind of like let architecture mediate between those different postures. I think and that's kind of like the main question that we're asking uh, of you. Uh, more, more of that. Uh, let me just... Uh, 
same thing. I mean, three postures. I mean, you can understand a little bit of the of the narrative. Uh, this closing, folding, and unfolding. Again, now kind of like the figure is way much more space, and and revealed almost in a two time. You can see like this character and that character appearing and reappearing. Uh, and then this is like again, this is like if, if somebody else before like invented the, the armature. Now you can see kind of like you have like the, the solid body, which is like the, the inexpressive sculpture uh, tilted on, on, on its side versus the two moving elements or, or seemingly moving elements or dynamic elements on the two, two sides. And then you know, a whole array of, of them. Uh, again, this is like the presentation of now the hovering figure coming down and then the injured figure at the bottom and the way they presented one another to the crowd around it. I think it's just like a quite a, a remarkable feat uh, in terms of vantage point and the figures receding in space. Uh, we go through this one. Again, it's just like this is now the invention of the muscle uh, as, as an expressive form. So you can see that if before we were working with like a very rapid uh, and almost undefined muscle mass, uh, as you can see kind of in, in, in the figure at the bottom. Now when we get to Rubens, we actually understand that kind of like the shading between the different muscles, they become kind of like, in a way, kind of like a system of points or a system of like incredibly detailed parts that makes, in a way, the part or, or the idea of this rendering, the, the, the minuteness of the, of the muscle in a way takes over the weight of the composition. So first you actually look at muscle and muscle parts and then you actually start kind of like putting it together into a series of inter, interlock uh, figures. So again, this is kind of like finding what, when it seems like it's impossible to, we run out of room to experiment with three figures in space. There comes Ruben again, Rubens again, and, 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 and try to kind of like open the door and say, well, but we haven't looked at muscle mass yet. So let's see if that has anything to say about the composition or not. Um, and then this, I mean, we've seen glimpses of, this, of these things, kind of like the, 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 the animal form and the body form uh, and the metamorphosis between those two. Uh, and then kind of like taking it at a different level. So you see kind of like now in this one, we have like the idea of the three parts or, or the three human figures on the one side, but also we start kind of like getting, this is kind of like almost decadent realm in terms of, oh, you know, bodies are over, now we're just overdoing animals and see kind of how that looks like. You know? So let's bring a hippopotamus, a crocodile, and a couple of horses and see how that, and there's like a little of a leopard in the back as well. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of like taking it uh, a little step, uh, a step too much. And then finally, this is almost a, a little bit to kind of like exhaust this, this uh, this uh, talk or this display of, of, of array of, of, of post potential compositions between three bodies. Uh, and which is a kind of like the Caravaggio moment, which is like I think a kind of where this discussion a little bit comes to an end because like if we've been talking about alternatively about space, environment, landscape, and, and, and body as a way of composing this thing, what's gonna happen now in, 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 in Caravaggio, it's like he's gonna kind of like let the figure and the figure only do the talking and carry the way of the composition. So you can see kind of like that, the, what I call the invention of black. It's like this invention of now the idea of perspective is like fully collapsed in the body itself and we're kind of erasing all indexes of uh, spatial recess or environment and so on. And that's gonna be done or like taken over by this idea of the black space. This is sort of like a rendition of the Narcissus by Caravaggio. Again, two figures mirror onto one another, seemingly water or not. Uh, it's, it's sort of also the invention of the dual as opposed to the, the triptych. Uh, so he's gonna start kind of like gonna work in more with dialectical conditions. Um, throughout composition. You can see now, again, kind of like this absence of either environment or space, but the kind of like the utmost presence of, of drama just by kind of like understanding how to kind of like compose almost architecturally, I would argue, with two masses uh, or, or masses being two human bodies understood, understood as masses and, and, and the way they interlock kind of carrying the drama of it. But absence of both environment and, 
buildings. Here we can see sort of like glimpses of, I mean, I think this, this is an interesting image in terms of like, there's a little bit of a, of a threshold or a step at the bottom. There's a little bit of a column on the center, but above all, there's a process of erasure of those marks kind of like from the center into the edge of the composition. So you can see kind of like how like you get like all this like black smear mass taking over and occluding or erasing the traces of architectonics in the picture plane. Again, now just like this is just also like the idea of lighting. You know, just like lighting, I think it's something that you guys kind of like quite successfully investigated in your, in your photography. And now you can see the kind of lighting becomes like almost as, as important as, we don't see the, the source of lighting, we don't see where the light is coming from, we don't see the openings where light is coming through, or the intensity of the time of the day, but definitely we see kind of how light affects the masses that we're looking at. So we have like darkness on the one side and kind of like highlights and, 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 and light as kind of means of composition. Again, three parts. Uh, I want you to pay attention a little bit also to this, it's the same painting, kind of like reproducing a little bit of a theme two or three times and kind of how that sequence evolves. So we have like the three bodies over here and kind of like a moment of beheading uh, in a different moment in a different composition. It's a little reminiscent of, of city and landscape. The third part of, of the beheading, which is like now is the actual moment of beheading. Just like these are, these are three unrelated, seemingly unrelated paintings for unrelated patterns, but you can see kind of like the constants of the about moment, the actual moment, oh, sorry, let me just, and the after moment. So it's just like pretty much always the same rendition of, of that action, but under different kind of like ter temporal uh, conditions. So yeah, it's sort of like absence of, uh, of space, but uh, uh, the advancement of, of time as, a, as a, when do we catch the action becomes sort of a little bit of, of, of the, the principle behind it. Um, again, this is sort of like the three bodies now, just like the third body represented by this sort of animal form, uh, pressing weight onto the bottom, onto the figure at the bottom. Uh, again, just so you can see sort of like the, the, the speaking of erasing moments of erasure, kind of how like the horse figure is kind of like occluding that sort of like sunrise moment. It's just like the sunrise is actually occluded by the figure. It's just like we need to, we need not to show that. So it's just like kind of like glimpses, but more, more than anything, indexes of, of erasure. Uh, a little bit more. And now you can see like that now we're fully realized in, in, in sort of the space of, of perspective, the space of uh, the body, uh, the tripartite, muscle mass being rendered, facial expression, lighting conditions kind of accumulated in a single frame. Uh, and also this ability to render sort of the seemingly religious and also kind of like the everyday in, with the same versatility. Uh, and this, I think, is like might be the, the final image of, 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 again, it's like this moment of like when and how do we uh, understand or, or decide to kind of create a composition. So it's sort of like this in-between moment, which is like this almost, we don't know if the cross is going forward or backward, if it's going to be a, a, a up, up, upward looking cross, cruciform, or, or a, a, a downward looking cruciform. Uh, but I think kind of like this idea of hinging and the composition being open to kind of, it can either go up or it can come down. Uh, and I think that's sort of like an interesting kind of way of understanding and, and the potential of kind of how to maybe compose with bodies in space. I guess architecture is related to, to the problem or tries to kind of uh, mediate between the problem. So looking forward to your experiments in the next following week. That's it, thank you. Questions, anybody? One painting too many. Uh, I see you back in the...
over there. I see you in like in five minutes. So, bye.